Hello everyone, today I will tell you the story of Yandere Death, aka the greatest Greek tragedy in game development, next to Blizzard. <laughs> The story of Yandere Dev doesn't start with his game, instead it starts with a different game. That game I'm talking about in question is Skullgirls! Now, I'm just gonna geek out here real quick and say that Skullgirls is my favorite fighting game of all time. Yes, it's better than Street Fighter 2. But it was also the fighting game that introduced the world to this pest of a human being. Who, as you can see by this gameplay footage, is getting his ass handed to him. We see, just like Peacock mains, Fiondary Dev was the vein of every Skullgirls player's existence. In fact, he was harassed so many times in the game that he left crying, but not without putting up a 4chan post. Now, you may think that that's a little harsh for the community to treat him like that, but as this video will progress, I bet you'll be wishing that he got more beaten up in real life than he did in this fighting game. <laughs> Now, you may be wondering why I called Alex Yandere Dev throughout most of this video. Well, I'll tell you why. For you see, a dev is basically someone who is working on a game. And Yandere is Japanese for sick love. Which are the two things Yandere Dev is known for. And if you actually read the 4chan post that Yandere Dev wrote, you would see that Yandere Dev wishes to make an indie game. And thus... He became Yandere Dev, the most infamous indie dev on the internet. Along with Philfish, but come on, nobody really remembers that dude. Even if this is a good game that you should play, I'm just saying. So, in 2014, Yandere Dev released his beta for his basically Persona meets Hitman game. And well, surprisingly, it was a smash hit. For you see, Yandere Dev had released his game at the right time in the right place. For you see, around this time, anime fans stopped being the butt of every joke, and indie games started to go mainstream and weren't just considered niche artsy games that losers play in their mother's basement. And around this time, the internet started to really take off in popularity. Which many old internet users think is a bad thing because now the internet is basically dominated by social media. But anyways, with all three stars aligning, Yandere Dev's game took off in popularity with such youtubers as markiplier jacksepticeye lauren seaside and many others playing his game and thus yandere dev's game became a sensation one that still lingers today along the likes of five nights at freddy's undertale stardew valley and many more this was of course if it were for yandere dev himself <laughs> Anyways, the way how Yandere Dev was handling Yandere Simulator reminds me a lot of the story of Icarus. As we all know, Icarus is most famous for eating so many chicken wings that he passed out on the floor. And also flying into the sun, but that's not important. What is important though, is the game that he was developing. For you see, the way Yandere Dev was handling his game it's almost the same way Tiny Bit handled Hello Neighbor. For you see, both games had very promising betas that many YouTubers played and enjoyed, but now are basically considered the complete jokes of their respected genres. But at least with Hello Neighbor, it's because the end game was so shitty and buggy that even Markiplier gave up on it. Ah, uh, you know what? I think that's enough mayhem for one episode. I'm gonna end this one here. I, I criticize it a lot just because, like, there's a lot more stuff. But I can't honestly say that the stuff is better. And that's the one thing that I'll say about it, because if I, I'm expecting as a game develops, it's gonna get, like, more logical and, and sensible, and, you know, it just seems even more nonsensical than it was before. So there's a lot more, but it's less refined, you know what I mean? But with Yandere Sim, well, the problem here comes from the fact that Yandere Dev didn't finish the game! And I don't mean it in the way that it's like Minecraft and that it constantly receives updates, meaning you have to check it out in order to see the cool new stuff that's being added. No, what I mean is, the whole game is pretty much the same as the beta for the past ten and a half years. Now, this would be fine, of course, if it was like a finished beta. 
But, oh, wait! He didn't even finish all the rivals! Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention how this game is supposed to be played. So you're a Yandere, which means sick love, as I said earlier, trying to win over the man of your dreams named Senpai. Yes, that's his real name. But unfortunately, there's rival girls who also want Senpai's dick. So your main objective throughout the game is to get rid of them by murder. Which already in and of itself is a pretty controversial idea for a video game, which is made it heavily worse by the fact that there's an aggressive amount of panty shots from underage girls. But the point remains, the fact that he got one rival out of ten rivals finished, even now, ten and a half years later, is still stupid. That would be like if the writer behind Scott Pilgrim stopped writing the comic book after Scott killed one of Romana Flower's exes. Imagine how big of a waste of potential and a letdown that would be. In fact, someone made an animation of what the hell has been happening ever since Yandere Dev started work on his game. Seriously, the amount of shit that happened since is arguably laughable considering the fact that he hasn't even finished his game, let alone created something that is worth anyone's time, still ten and a half years later. And this is kind of the problem when you have multiple people involved with this game. Okay, so a common misconception about Yandere Dev's game is that he was the only one working on it alone. Well, that's not completely true. And in many ways, that makes this all the more pathetic. For, you see, Tiny Build, who I mentioned earlier, decided to help out with Yandere Dev's game. Which is a pretty nice thing to do. But unfortunately, Yandere Dev took advantage of his kindness. So Yandere Dev would constantly berate and insult Tiny Build while he was working on his messy code. Yeah, I forgot to mention this, but the code to Yandere Simulator is so bad that I don't even think it's salvageable at this point. And, well, this eventually led to Tiny Build leaving Yandere Simulator forever. Yeah, great going, Yandere Dev. You screwed yourself over. And it wasn't just Tiny Build who left. It was everyone! Even the voice actors gave up on this game. In fact, some of them even shared their shitty experience with Yandere Dev. With all of the things that were unfolding around Yandere Dev, well... He became a lol cow. I can't believe I almost went eight minutes without mentioning him being an incel. Now, for those of you who don't know what an incel is, they're basically men who hate women because they're a virgin, which is pretty pathetic. And considering the fact that people already hated him for making what is essentially the shittiest game ever, you can understand what's about to happen next. This led to the great trolling of Yandere Dev. If you thought him being harassed in Skullgirls was bad, how's about him being harassed in his own private Discord server? If you thought Gyro Shadow Scales Discord server was a cesspit to be in, well, Yandere Dev's Discord tops that in terribleness. Seriously, he had the ban hammer on him all the time because of all of the trolling. Which ironically led to people speedrunning getting banned on his Discord server, which was more fun than playing his game, mind you. And given Yandere Dev's vile tendencies, people actually started digging up more dirt on him, such as him being a sexual deviant. <laughs> What is it with lol cows of being sexual deviants? You know what I mean? From drinking his own semen out of a cup. Yeah, he fucking did that. From simping over Samus that goes even beyond my levels of simping over Samus. And if that weren't bad enough, he also bought sex dolls with the money that was supposed to go to his game. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, but he had like a Kickstarter sort of thing where you could help pay finish Yandere Simulator. Which is a complete scam, as you know. I'm also pretty sure that he broke the sex doll, if I remember correctly. And although, yeah, these are definitely gross, but by internet standards, they're pretty normal. But what isn't normal is the fact that he DMs minors. Seriously, this is just disgusting. How come nobody's Chris Hansen, this guy? Given the fact that a majority of his fan base, or more accurately, all of his fan base, are pretty much children. Yeah, it's not a very good look for you, Yon Theory Dev. 
Even some of his fans have started to turn on him, as you can see by this DM. So, uh, yeah, I guess being a scumbag really has its consequences, huh? So, it's ten and a half years later, and Yandere Dev's game is no closer to being finished as it was in 2015. And while, yeah, Yandere Dev has worked more on the game recently, but let's be honest here, who the fuck even wants it at this point? And he also has apologized for being a groomer, and yeah, I think we should forgive him, guys. I hope you people know I'm being sarcastic, because seriously, fuck him, fuck his game, and fuck everything he stands for. You are more of a disgrace to indie games more than the Undertale fandom. There's a reason why people compare you to Scott Coffin, Toby Fox, and Aaron Baroni. Because they succeeded at everything you failed at. They made good games, and people still play them to this day. Also doesn't help by the fact that they still look better than you currently. Seriously, you look like A.O. Oni. Well, yet the other devs have franchises that continue to flourish to this day. Like, Scott Coffin has made many FNAF games while you were slacking off in game development. In fact, not just FNAF games, he's written many books and even had his own movie made. And that's not even talking about the endless amounts of merch that's been made. In fact, let's talk about how Toby Fox created the biggest sensation in the world of indie games known as Undertale, which is still popular to this day, albeit lesser than it was in its prime. In fact, he's even made Delta Room, which is just as popular as Undertale is. In fact, let's talk about Eric Baroni created Stardew Valley, which is the most popular Steam game, which is still being played to this day and constantly gets updates, unlike your shitty Hitman meets Persona game. In fact, he's even making himself a new game called Haunted Chocolatier. Seriously, he was on Forbes for crying out loud. Forbes! And that's not even if we bring Notch into this equation. And if you don't know who Notch is, he made a very good game called MINECRAFT! He's a fucking billionaire now! In fact, he's making himself a new game, which I'm definitely going to play when it releases. And for those of you who don't know what the game is called, it's called Levers and Chests. I think you should check it out. While you yourself, Yandere Dev, are a complete joke in the games industry! Not only is your game banned on Twitch, but it was also pulled from Steam by Gabe himself. You are the Dobson of video game development, which is an insult to Andrew Dobson, surprisingly. You know what? Maybe I should make a video on Andrew Dobson someday. Hmm. Anyways. In fact, even I'm better than you. I'm able to do things you will never be able to do. Look at me. I'm outside making grass angels. And although I don't have a girlfriend yet, at least women like to be around me. And I don't just mean my grandma and my mom. No, I also mean women my age think I'm attractive and cute. Well, yet people your age probably think you were the hobo who got a house. <laughs> I could go on about reasons why I'm better than you, Yandere Dev, but I'm getting kind of sick about talking about you. So I'm just gonna stop for today. So, uh, yeah. Toodles and burn in hell.